Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Brandon Bias from Chicken.com and welcome to another Tutorial Tuesday. Today what we'll be doing is taking a picture of our choosing, and in my case I'm going to use this picture of myself just standing in a road, you know, nothing too fancy or anything like that. And we're going to take this image, put it through a series of color conversions to create some kind of effect in the end that, you know, really isn't all that important. Now, in, in the case of this picture, it ended up looking like this. Now, it's nothing really special or anything, it's just different. And I guess that's the only real goal that we have, is to create something a little bit different from the original. And uh, in, the, in this case, it ended up being like a little bit warmer in the skin tones, a little bit darker in some of the blues, and maybe a little bit darker overall, which is, you know, easily fixable with a curves adjustment layer. And voila, you have the original, and you've got this new effect through color conversions. And, you know, this effect is kind of, you know, fun to mess with. You can create some really bizarre, uh, you know, color effects and things of that sort. So, um, I guess uh, at first, what you guys should do is follow along, you know, get the idea of, you know, how this process works, and then go back and mess with things, you know, just on a willy-nilly basis and just do random crap. You know, just have fun with this later on if you have time, you know? So, uh, before we get into this tutorial, we are going to be, you know, messing with channels and color modes and things like that. So, I think it is kind of important for you to understand, you know, what a channel is and how that works into the color mode. So, if you want to, like, skip this little, you know, demonstration that I'm going to be showing, uh, I'll put an annotation on the screen for you to click. And, um, you know, if, you know, it's just for you guys that already know what you're doing, things of that sort. So, for those of you that are sticking around, uh, some of you may or may not know um, about this already, but every image that you see is uh, essentially created out of some sort of combination of colors of light. And in the case of, you know, like computer monitors or TVs, you know, things of that sort, most of the time those colors are going to be red, green, and blue, which are essentially the primary colors of lights. And, you know, to get a good view at this, what we can do is go over to our channels panel and you'll see that we've got those colors right here. We've got red, green, blue, and we also have the RGB composite, which essentially combines those three colors together to create the composite image that you see on your screen. And one difference between you and me right now, you know, other than skill, wink, wink, <laughs> just kidding, but seriously, I'm better than you. <laughs> All right, back on topic, uh, the main thing that I have different from you right now is that I have the red, green, and blue channels displayed in color, just to simply show you that these are indeed red, green, and blue. Normally, these display in grayscale. Now, if you want to view these in color, there's an easy way to go about doing that. You can go to Edit, Preferences, and go to Interface. And then there is an option right here called Show Channels in Color. And for the time being, you can turn those on, but really, it's better to keep that off. Just, you know, a heads up, okay? Anyway, let me show you what these channels do. Essentially, the red channel uh, just contains all of the information that tells Photoshop where all the colors that are red are in the document, and how intense they are, and, you know, things of that sort. And, of course, same thing goes for green and blue. And here's something that's kind of fun. If you want to, you can turn on just two channels at a time and see what kind of weird combinations you can get. For example, I can turn on green and blue, and you see all the different shades of green and blue. And of course, the combinations of the two which end up being like a Cheyenne color. Or we can turn on blue and red, which, you know, create blues, reds, and uh, magentas. And of course, there's good old red and green, which create a bunch of different yellow colors. And so basically what you want to gather from this is that you can combine these different colors in just about any way that you want. Now the way that you do that can be kind of tricky, you know, d depending on what you're doing, but it is possible to create different compositions solely by eliminating different colors from your image. So keeping that in mind that we have these uh, different channels that contain different sets of lights to uh, create this overall composite, we can basically create, you know, all kinds of fun stuff. And so that's essentially all that we're going to be doing. So 
let's get cracking and make some fun stuff. First thing I'm gonna do, obviously, is import the picture that I wanna use, which is, of course, just me standing here. And uh, solely for the sake of not accidentally overwriting this original image, I'm going to go to Image and click Duplicate, so that way I have another duplicate of this to work with. So I'm just gonna save this as Duplicate, simply because I don't feel like sacrificing the brain power to come up with something a little bit more creative than that. All right, so now we've got this duplicated, let's convert this into a different color mode. So let's go to Image, let's go to Mode, and the first thing we're going to convert to is called multi-channel. Now, the first thing that you need to know about multi-channel is that it's originally meant to house masks. And, you know, that way you can have all these different masks for different projects. You can, you know, share them with, you know, different teammates or friends, you know, things of that sort. And overall, that's just the purpose of multi-channel, which is why this right here looks horrible. There's this... It's just lacking in contrast and it just looks ugly. But there's something interesting about this. If you're to go over to the channels panel, ch channels panel, sounds kind of funny. Uh, you'll see that we've got cyan, magenta, and yellow. And if you remember right, those are basically three of the four colors in CMYK, which is cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. So basically all we're missing to make this into CMYK is a black channel. So just for the fun of it, let's make ourselves a black channel. So the way we're going to do that is by going to Image and going to Calculations. But unfortunately, by default, Calculations is grayed out. So in order to enable that, we have to change our channels from all three of these being selected to just one. So basically, just click Cheyenne. There you go. One channel selected. So now we can go back to Image, go to Calculations, and you'll see that this is starting to work up pretty nicely as a black channel. But, of course, it's a little bit uh, overblown in areas and just, you know, needs some work. So let's change some of these settings up. Uh, let's change the channel from Cheyenne to Yellow in Source 2. And by default, the blending mode is going to be set to Multiply. So it's going to be, like, really dark. So instead, change it from Multiply to Screen. And basically what's happening here is the calculations panel is taking the Cheyenne channel and combining it with the yellow channel based on the blending mode of screen. And if that, you know, makes sense to you, that's fantastic. If not, don't really worry about it. Just kind of, you know, follow the steps and go with it, all right? So once you've got that set up, just hit OK. And you'll see that we've got spot color 1. And unfortunately, this is simply another Cheyenne channel but we wanted this to be a black channel, so we need to do a little bit of editing here. And thankfully, that's really easy to do. So what we're going to do is go to the Spot Color 1 channel and give that a double click to open up the channel options, and we're going to click the blue color next to where it says Color to bring up a new color picker. And just to keep this you know, nice and simple, we're going to change the C value to 0% on the bottom right, and we're going to change the K value to 100%. And if you notice, the name of this channel changed from spot color 1 to black, which is fantastic. So now we'll hit OK, we'll hit OK again, and let's turn on all of these channels. So if we do a little bit of a before and after, you can see that adding in this black channel made this image look a lot better. However, it's not perfect because we're in multi-channel and this color mode has no idea what to do with all of these channels. So, in order to tell this, you know, what to do with all these channels, the easiest thing we can do is convert this into a CMYK color mode. But, you know, before we do that, we might want to, you know, mess with these channels just to kind of, you know, make things a little bit more interesting, don't you think? For example, maybe we could go to the Cheyenne channel and, you know, just turn it off. Everything becomes a little bit more red, but, you know, maybe that's something that you like. Or maybe we turn off the magenta channel or the yellow channel. You know, just do whatever the heck you want. But in my case, I'm going to keep all these on simply because, um, well, I'll show you exactly why I want to keep all these on, you know, in just these next couple of steps here. Now, before I do move on and convert this to CMYK color, I do realize that some of you will want to turn off one of these channels for one reason or another simply because you'll be experimenting. So I guess real quick, I'll show you what to do in order to, you know, basically delete the contents of a channel. Because if you go to Cheyenne and delete it, 
it, nothing's going to happen. You just push backspace, delete, you know, nothing's going to happen. To delete the contents of this channel, make sure you have your foreground and background colors set to the default black and whites, and then hit control, backspace, or command delete. And that will delete the contents of that layer. And so now that's all, you know, nice and pretty looking for you, you can go to image, mode, CMYK color. But of course, I want to keep that other color, so undo that. And then I'll go in and go to CMYK color. And it'll say that it's about to convert this to CMYK using web coded V2. That's completely fine, we'll just hit OK. Now that we've switched over to CMYK, Photoshop better understands what to do with all of these different channels, and as such, the image looks a lot better than it did before. But of course, you know, I don't really like CMYK because those are colors used for printing and they're pretty dull. So I'm going to do another color conversion by going to Image, Mode, and going into Lab Color. Now, if you've never really worked in lab color before, it definitely works a lot different than any of the other color modes. For example, if you were to look at the A layer, it basically looks like utter crap because all it's showing is like um, some teals, some magentas, and looks like a lot of gray. And the B channel is like yellow and blue, you know, in combinations of that sort. It's, it's really bizarre, hard to explain. I wouldn't really worry about it too much. And in combination with those two, you have the lightness channel, which is essentially, you know, the lightness of the image. And it's those three layers together that create your lab, which is, you know, kind of interesting, kind of not, you know, who cares, right? Let's do something interesting. So let me show you how you can improve the saturation or basically change up some of the colors in a lab document. So let's go back to our layers and add a new levels adjustment layer. Now, by default, this is uh, being applied to the lightness channel, which is not really what we want to do. We want to change some of the colors in this. So we'll change this from lightness to A. And for this, I'm going to amp up the black point to about 50. And I'm going to do that by hitting shift and the up arrow key five times. And when you do that, you'll notice that a lot of these green colors start showing up. And that's because that's one of the colors that are part of the A channel. And so in order to counterbalance those colors that are being more prominent now, we need to bring down the white slider an equal amount. So I'll use shift and the down arrow key five times. So one, two, three, four, five. And that will kind of counterbalance those colors. Now, of course, there's a whole other channel of colors that we need to worry about. So we need to go from A to B and do the same thing. So we'll go up one, two, three, four, five and then go down one, two, three, four, five, and you'll notice that we get an overall hue boost. So basically everything has been a little bit more saturated. And if you want to start messing with colors, you know, change, you know, move the white slider, make it a little bit more blue, maybe make this uh, slider a little bit more to the left, make it a little bit more, you know, bizarro, do whatever the heck you want, experiment, things of that sort, and, you know, maybe you'll get something that you find particularly interesting. Now, unfortunately, I've grown attached to how this looks. And so I'm going to go back and redo all of my sliders real quick and have this nice little boost in saturation that I've grown accustomed to. So once you've got this kind of adjusted in a way that you want, all we'll do now is go from image, mode, and back to RGB color, and I will flatten this image together. So there we go, now we've got this um, slightly different version of our photo. And from here on out, you can basically start doing, you know, whatever the heck you want. So I could, you know, bring in a curves adjustment layer, brighten it up a little bit, and maybe I'll bring in the original as well to kind of blend that with our effect here and kind of make it a little bit more normalized. So if for some reason that you do want to bring in the original layer, there is a fun way that you can go about doing that. So for starters, I will make a new layer, and I'm going to name this original. And to fill this in with our original image, we're going to go to our history panel, and you'll see that this very topmost part right here that says duplicate is uh, basically our original image. And to the left of that, you will see this little history brush icon. And so basically, Photoshop understands that we want to use this original for our history brush or, you know, whatever history tool that we use. 
So let's go back to name change or whatever the last thing you did was. And we're going to bring up our fill dialog by hitting shift backspace or shift delete if you're on a Mac. And if you go to the use drop down menu, you can see that we have history on our list. And with a blending mode of normal and opacity of 100%, we can hit OK. And that will fill in that layer with our original picture. And so we can just set the saturation, or sorry, we can set the blend mode of this to saturation to kind of, you know, make it a little bit more like the original image. But, you know, you can do whatever the heck you want with that. Maybe I'll just duplicate that, set that to normal. And that way we can get a nice little before and after. All right. So um, I think that we've got a pretty good idea of um, how we can go through all of these different color modes to create a more interesting effect. Keep in mind that you can create all kinds of different effects with this process. And of course, you can do anything after this to, you know, create different kinds of contrast, things of that sort. You can create a whole different, you know, image from the original. Let me show you a bit of an example. So here is an image that I worked on, you know, for, you know, another demonstration purpose earlier on. Now, what ended up happening was I got this effect. And needless to say that this looks like all kinds of dramatic and sad and just, oh man, I, I just love how this turns out. And this was mostly possible thanks to the steps that I just showed you. The only thing that I didn't show you was I basically did an apply image on the ends, which ended up giving it this whole like sad feeling to it all. But Either way, the initial steps that I took to get here were the same as what I just showed you. And as such, I guess this just goes to show you that by messing with uh, color modes and channels and things of that sort, you can create a wide variety of effects, colors, and things of that sort. So guys, I guess that's about everything that I have to say to you. Uh, I hope you learned something at least remotely interesting. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any suggestions or improvements that you can uh, you know, tell me to help me improve, that'd be fantastic. Leave a comment in the comment section below. And as always, I will see you guys next Tuesday.